Hey everybody. While editing this video down, I realized it got a little longer than I expected it to. So I made this uh, fast time uh, version of it and put it at the beginning here. It'll also probably be a short too. So uh, enjoy the fast time and uh, afterwards you'll see the entire video. Thanks for watching. So today I'm working on an A1990 MacBook Pro and it had some uh, liquid damage on it, um, mostly on the right side, a little bit, oh, just all over the place. It looked like it was just run through the muck. So I got the board working, repaired the board. I did my modification here to make sure that the board will not get killed by future liquid damage. So this is the SSD um, power control here, the SSD power supply. And uh, this chip is very dangerous. I've uh, run across it a couple times on this channel. Um, I'm going to be talking about it forever, that it's uh, just a terrible chip to have here in this corner right here. So I, I went through the board, uh, repaired a little bit of damage and stuff like that, got the board working. So the board is booting up on the um, bench, no problem. Um, I didn't trust the housing, so I put it in my own housing. Uh, boot it up, no problem, to the login screen, everything's working. I put it into their housing, and it's just 20 volts with um, fluctuating up and down to um, 30 milliamps down to zero, 30, 7 milliamps, 30 milliamps down to zero, doing some crazy stuff. So, I, I go through the board, normal troubleshooting, disconnect one thing at a time, or connect one thing at a time, um, and see what stops it from booting. When I finally got to the, I go from left to right, ironically, I go from left to right. So it was the last thing that I plugged in, which is the uh, power button. The Touch ID sensor power button is what I plugged in last, and that stopped the machine from turning on. So it, in its own case, it would boot with the touch bar plugged in, then it would boot with the trackpad plugged in, then it would boot with the keyboard plugged in. And then I make my way to the power button, and it, the power button is keeping it from turning on. So we have the power button here on, on my desk. So we take a look at the bottom of the power button. So first off, I have the power button stuck down here with a little bit of double-sided tape. It, this is immensely useful if you're going to be working on a power button or anything small like this. Just stick it down to your mat with double-sided tape. It doesn't hold too well on the silicone. The silicone's kind of slick but it helps a lot that it that it's just doesn't move that much. But we take a look at the back here. First I inspect the cable and the connector. The cable and the connector are fine. The little cable that's in the machine is fine. But we look back here on the back of this and we already see that there's some green corrosion on the contacts here. So there's a little bit of green corrosion around here. Plus, it's just dirty all around on the bottom, on the sides of it and everything. So the, this power button's seen some things. So the, It doesn't look like it got into the solder. These connections still look great. I don't think I need to touch up these connections. But this is keeping the machine from turning on. So we need to open this button. So I'm going to take my tweezers and get a hold of one of the corners of this captain tape. So the yellow that you see here with this little nub... That's just captain tape holding it down. So we need to reuse this, so be careful when pulling it off. Be gentle with it. Try not to fold it over too much or anything. 
pull that back, and look at that. We lost the disc. The disc went flying. That's not a problem. But look at all that corrosion in there. Here's the, the disc that belongs on top of here. This is, the, this is what actually makes the contact. This is the little buckling uh, disc. So th this is what turns it on and off. Look, look at all that corrosion. That looks like that was bridged by corrosion. So that's why it's not turning on, because it, it probably thought the power button was pressed constantly. Even though I pressed it a couple times, I think the corrosion was just bridging it enough. Let's get in here and clean this up and see if this works. I'm just going to take an X-Acto blade, very, very lightly scrape away this corrosion. You don't want to lose any material, any metal material if possible. Okay, that's it with that. Now I'm going to take an eraser stick, uh, which I need to sharpen. should have did that before. So th these, these are one of the most useful things. This is a eraser pencil. So the whole pencil is an eraser. It has a little um, broom off the back of it. This is so good for cleaning all kinds of contacts. Uh, charge board contacts, once you have the charge board apart, um, card edges of things like uh, ram sticks, stuff like that. This, this type of pen, uh, pencil, this type of eraser, is absolutely amazing at cleaning all this stuff. It's an indispensable tool in all this. I'm just going to get in here, rotate it around a little bit. It's just going to polish up all of this metal in here. There's still some corrosion in there. Let's get a Q-tip with some alcohol. There's still a couple lines of corrosion, so I want I want this gone. I want this line here gone. All right, that looks good for that. Now we need to clean the little buckling disc. Now this is difficult. Uh, you can, since it's it's springy, you can push this a little bit in the wrong way, and it goes boing, and you'll never see it again. Unless you have an impeccably clean shop where you can sweep around your bench and actually find it. If this goes boing, it's gone. I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything with this because it's just going to rotate under it. Oh, that, that kind of works. It looks like we lost some plating on it. But I think it's going to be fine once we get it good and clean and put back in there. Okay, some more rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. Now the next step is, I'm going to leave this apart, and I'm going to put this in the ultrasonic cleaner. So I want to clean out everything that's in here. So this is going to now go over the ultrasonic cleaner. I will leave the double-sided tape here. Be very careful with this wire here. It's very easy to rip it. And the 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 connector is um, sticky as well with the double-sided tape on it. So the, this this connect, this right here is a grounding type double-sided tape, so it will stick to your bench. And if you're not careful, it might stick a little too hard, and you go to pick up your um, your power button, and you just rip this cable. So you got to be real careful about that. Don't rip that cable. All right. So here at the ultrasonic cleaner, I'm going to take. Uh, one of my tea strainers. Open up the tea strainer. The power button goes in the tea strainer. Close the tea strainer. Pull 
Pop that right in there. And we'll let that go for two minutes. that done I'll take that out give it a little shake now I will disappear into the dark room where it will be rinsed off so now that we have that out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner it got rinsed by um, deionized water, and then a little spray of rubbing alcohol. So I probably want to give it a little bit more rubbing alcohol. I'll just take a tear of paper towel. I'll just give it a spray of rubbing alcohol. There we go. <clears throat> and I could dry it with some compressed air. Again, be very careful with this uh, wire on it. If you're going to spray anywhere near the wire, make sure you're supporting the wire. Okay, so let's see how it looks out of the ultrasonic cleaner. I think that's much improved. The inside of that looks good. This looks good. I'm gonna put this back. I could put the captain tape button back on it. Captain tape button also has another disc. Usually, um, water or corrosion doesn't get up on that disc. Try to line it up best you could. Press it right back down on there. using the, the smooth back of my tweezers to press it down. One of the smaller reasons why I polished the end of my tweezers. A lot of times the back end of these tweezers would be a little um, sharp or jagged or rough. These have been cleaned and polished, the very tip of it. Helps you keep them cleaner longer and it, it helps with uh, doing stuff like this. Okay, now we can put it back in the machine and give it a try. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to clean out the spot where it goes. Because the spot where it goes is just as dirty as that button was. Yeah, a Q-tip really shouldn't be that dirty coming out of your keyboard. Just whatever liquid that this was in. It looked like it was muddy almost. Okay, it is installed. You just close the screen down and that make sure that it's completely flat when you close that screen and you're gonna break the screen. Although this screen's already broken. Okay, so this is the back side of the button where it connects. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the electrical connector. Put the lock down. Okay, let's clean up the back of this a little bit too. This looks gross. 
Again, be very careful with that wire right there. I can run the Q-tip over that and break it. It's very thin, very fragile. Okay, so those two were into the case. So you don't have to be real careful about them. But the next four here are into the power button. And remember, the power button is resting up against the screen. So be very gentle with how hard you push on these when you first start them out. Once you get a couple in, it'll pull the power button up to this spring, and then you don't have to worry about pushing down on that screen. All right, now we'll get the fan back in here. Okay, so we have the uh, power button plugged in, everything that we need is plugged in. We have screen, touch bar, keyboard, trackpad. We're gonna plug it in. Five volts, 20 volts, 100 milliamps, 200 milliamps, and one amp, and fan spin. All right, so there you go. That power button just needed a little bit of a cleanup. Just take it all apart and clean it up. Just gotta be real careful with that uh, Captain Tape uh, top that you don't rip that or bend it up too bad because that has to go back on top unless you have some donor ones to pull off, which you don't usually have. Yeah, I hope you learned something. Have a good day.